awesome man of God. I don't need a bio to read. I've watched your life. To read something off the paper versus watching your life and seeing what your life is all about means so much more. And so at this time, open up that book, the Bible, the Word of God. I don't know about you, but I love the Word of God. And so you're in for a blessing on today. We thank God for you, Brother Nate. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a head praise. Amen. I'm so, I am so humbled uh, from the words of First Lady Lowe. Let's give her a hand. My amazing brother, Pastor Lowe, we bless him as he's on assignment. And I'm just so excited to be here. You are my family, so uh, I feel at home. Um, I, I really, truly am blessed. Thank you, sir. I'm truly blessed to be here, and um, I always ask the Holy Spirit when I'm, when I'm requested. Uh, I, w- I just finished doing, uh, speaking at another service that we had our church last night, so y'all pray for me. This is service number four in two days, and, uh, but you know, I, once we say yes to the Lord, I was sharing in the last service, once we say yes to the Lord, all provisions are met. And the reason why I say that is because sometimes we have this thing in our mind that's afraid to say yes to the Lord. And I think a lot of reasons why we afraid is because we think we got to pay our own bill. Let me explain. So if I ask First Lady to, uh, you know, if I said, First Lady, can you uh, go, go to the store and get me uh, some, some potato chips? And some Pepsi. I know that ain't healthy. Y'all pray for me. (laughs) The moment I requested and asked her, do she have to pay for it? Who should be paying for the order? The one who made the order. So when you say yes, all you're saying is yes, and I don't have to worry about provision. Because if you want me to do it, you will provide. <laughs> this is going to get good today. This word today is going to bless your soul. So please have a seat because uh, as First Lady said, I love uh, diving into the word of God. Let's give God hand praise for the praise and worship today. It was so wonderful. So I, again, this is, you know, if you guys can bear with me a few minutes because this teaching, I got to, I got to walk you through some things for you to understand what God is doing in your life. Who in here, you've asked God this question, Lord, how did I get here? Anybody ever asked God that question? You, you've been going through stuff and you, do you, why, why, am, why is this happening to me? Why am I in Buffalo? Why do I live on that street? Why did I just go through that trial? If that is you, my assignment today will be a blessing to you. Amen. So just close your eyes. We're going to pray and then we're going to go into the word of God. Father, I thank you so much for what you're going to speak today. I don't take this, uh, this for granted what you are going to speak. Uh, I pray that this word will change everyone's life the way it changed mine. Thank you again for just confirming to the many today who need to hear something to encourage their faith that you are still working in their life. We give your name, glory, praise, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We thank God for the amazing musicians that's here as well. Amen. 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 Please turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 15. I'm going to read a scripture to you that you probably read (laughs) and just kind of skipped over it because it doesn't make sense. But I promise you, this is going to bless you so good because um, whether you believe it or not, God is doing something in your life. He's taking you to a place that you may not see where he's taking you. He's doing some things in you that you may not understand. And when you see this today, this is going to really um, help you understand that everything that's happening in your life is not by accident. So one of my favorite scriptures before I read Genesis 15 um, is 
Romans 8, 28, that says, and we know that all things work together for the good. That's one of my favorite scriptures. Um, oh, yeah, you can, we can, you can hold the music. And he said, all things work together for the good. And to those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. That is a scripture that I love. I needed that scripture some years ago because I went through um, some transitions in my life um, in these 30 years of ministry. And I'm going to be honest, there was times I was like, I don't know what you're doing. God, I really don't know, Brother Chuck, what in the world you are doing. Like, you, you've made a detour, Lord. Like, you told me one thing and everything is going in the opposite direction. And I didn't understand it until I read this verse. And this verse set me free. So, Genesis chapter 15 and I'm going to read four verses, and then I'm going to do the best I can to help you understand your life and what God is doing with you. Verse 12 says, and when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. Verse 13 says, and he said unto Abram, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. And shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. Verse 14, and also that nation whom shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Verse 15, and thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, thou shalt be buried in a good old age. Verse 16, but in the fourth generation they shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Now, I know what I just read. It was like, okay, what in the world was that? Please turn with me now to Exodus <laughs> chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. I hope you guys love the word of God. Because I promise you we go praise him in a little bit. Exodus chapter 3, and I'm going to read verse 7 to verse 10. Exodus 3, verse 7 to verse 10 says, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard thy cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows, verse 8, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land. Unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Verse 9. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Verse 10. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee to Pharaoh, and thou, thou mayest bring Forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Please look at your neighbor and say, let's get ready. Let's get ready. This word will bless you. I'm going to talk to you today. And, and, and when, I, when, I tell you, when I tell you what we're going to talk about, I just, I just need a few people who, who is excited about the Lord to give them a praise when I tell you what we're going to talk about. Well, <laughs> she is, <laughs> she loves <her. laughs> She said, forget that, forget that. I praise the words. <laughs> I want you, I'm going to talk to you today about you are in the middle of a prophecy. This is going to get deep. You, I, I, I promise you, you better, you want to write this down. Because by the time I walk you through all this, you're going to be like, oh my Lord, that was all in the Bible. And I didn't even realize it. You are in the middle of a prophecy. Now, remember that first verse we read in Genesis chapter 15, the one that we skip over in our personal Bible studies? <laughs> you know, the one about Abram, and he was telling Abram, he said, listen, Abram was in this place. God speaks to Abraham, Abram, and he tells him, he says, your seed, at this time, Abram did not have a son. He didn't even have a child yet. And listen to what God was saying. Your seed is going 
to a land that is not theirs. And they're going to be afflicted 400 years, Sister Lisa. The, the, the baby first lady hasn't even been born. And God is already telling Abram what the end goal look like. Now watch this. So God is telling Abram, they go go through 400 years, then I'm going to judge that nation, and then they're going to leave there and then go here. And I know Abram was like, you're talking to a man who don't even have a seed to start with. So that don't even make sense. But God was giving him a prophecy of the end because there's a scripture, just in case you forgot, that says, I know the plans that I have for you. <laughs> Thoughts of peace to give you an expected end. So when God talks about you, he's always talking about the end of you. This is about to get deep. Your problem is you looking at where you are today. <laughs> so you're struggling because you don't understand what he is doing today. So watch this. Y'all, I just read Exodus 3. And in Exodus 3 comes a man by the name of Moses. Y'all know Moses, right? Yes, yes. All right. Moses wasn't even born when we read Genesis 15. So there was a prophecy in Genesis 15. Genesis, um, Exodus 3, it starts coming to pass. But there is a problem here. This prophecy was so detailed that God told Abram, it's going to be 400 years. Meaning he told him already how long they're supposed to stay in bondage. This may be too deep for some people. <laughs> he actually calculated the years of slavery before the slaves even was born. And then he says, but don't worry about it. I'm going to bring them out again. Isaac wasn't born. Now, the character I really want to highlight today, and I'm going to have fun right now because I feel the anointing. All right. All right. The character we're going to talk about is Joseph. Y'all know Joseph, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Now, I love Joseph because if you read Genesis chapter 37 to Genesis chapter 50, you're going to know a lot about Joseph. Joseph was an amazing young man. And the reason why I relate to Joseph is because when Joseph was 17, he had a dream that he was ruling. It's about to get deep. Joseph, who wasn't there in Genesis 15, <laughs> is getting a dream that his brothers are bowing down before him. There's only one problem. Joseph is 17 years old. And the reason why I like Joseph is because I was 17 years old mm -hmm. when God came after me. I was on uh, Shuley and East Ferry. Y'all know what I said? And I, back then, I was in high school, and I was in Shuley and East Ferry, and I was throwing a, uh, one of the biggest house parties over there. And back then, I wasn't saved, and I was, you know, we was partying hard up in that little house party. And it was too many people in the house, and my cousin let me use the house, and the window cracked because the people were dancing, and the house was so tight that people were dancing, and one of the young ladies bust the window open because they ain't had no place to move. And so when that happened, I ended the party, and when I ended the party, I, I mean, I wasn't thinking about it then, but because everything back then, y'all remember the gangs that used to be back then? I was a part of one, and we was over in the wrong area, and so the guys in that area decided to come to my party. And when they came to my party, they did not come empty-handed. They came with something called a gun. Y'all know those things that we carry? And the, they were saying, uh, we coming to get the birthday boy. Where he at? And I'm like, oh, Jesus. So, you see, now I want to call on them, right? <laughs> I wasn't called on them before. So, watch this. True story. Two-bedroom house. I run and hide in the bathroom. And there's two girls in the tub from the party hiding because they're too afraid to go out because of the, uh, the, uh, everybody know about the guns and stuff. They're hiding in the bathroom. Two-bedroom apartment. Me and my friend Charles jump in the bathtub in the dark. And we're sitting back there hiding behind the curtains, and everybody leave the house except us four in the bathroom. And all of a sudden, we heard these, these guys coming in the house. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Where he at? He's in here somewhere. Where he at? He is in here somewhere. And I'm behind the curtain saying to myself, what am I doing? I don't belong here. This is not me. I think God want me to do something. God, please get me out of this. And I'm sitting here. They walk in the living room. 
in the first bedroom, walk past the kitchen, walk in the kitchen, and walk right to the back bathroom, and walk right back out, and did not look in the bathroom. I jumped out the tub, ran out the back door, down that down side out, and I'm in the back of the house, and I'm looking at all these people in front of the street, crying and, and scared, and there's like a hundred something people out there, and I'm sitting up there saying, they, I feel responsible for all these people that I'm about to make them feel like they're losing their life. And it was in the back of that, that yard at 17 that I said, God, if you get me out of this. Have anybody ever said that before? God, if you get me? So, okay. So I'm back there. I said, God, if you get me out of this, I will serve you. Now watch this. The story gets even more interesting because the next day, God got me out. Thank God. Let's give God a hand. Praise He got me out. Amen. Praise God, right? But watch this. This gets fun because God know our heart. He know when we playing. So you know what happens when God, you know, brings you out and you're like, oh, and then you go right back. So the next day, I went right back, but uh, first lady, being the fool, woke up that morning. Man, that was a crazy party. And I overslept because my party was on a Sunday night, and I had to get up for school, and I missed the bus. So I get on a late bus, and this bus, for some reason, decided, I don't know why, because of traffic, to go down Bailey Street and then turn down East Ferry. And I'm like, I don't supposed to be coming over here. This is where I was at last night. And when I'm driving down East Ferry, I see six guys at a bus stop, and they get on the bus. I'm in the middle of the back of the bus. Three sit on this side, and three sit on this side. And guess what they're talking about? When we find that birthday boy, we go beat the snot out of him for coming in our... And I'm sitting right in the middle. I'm like, Lord Jesus, please don't let nobody get on this bus and call my name. They knew my name, but they didn't know my face. And I had to ride with those six guys all the way to the Utica station hearing about what they were going to do to me. But you know why I'm standing here today and nothing happened to me that day? Because I was in the midst of a prophecy. From heaven perspective, oh, that was supposed to happen. <laughs> because this is part of the process to get him to the end. This may be too deep. <laughs> so... Joseph tells his dream. He gets thrown in a pit. He's like, what, is, what, what just happened? My own brothers threw me in a pit? Then they say, no, no, no. They take him out of the pit, mother, and then sell him. Can you imagine the rejection this guy is feeling? Then he goes to a place, works as a slave. Doing the right thing, the master's wife seduces him. He does the right thing and get lied on and go to prison. <laughs> now he's in prison. He's like, how did I get here? I did nothing wrong. Now watch this. He's in prison and then two guys get these dreams that they don't understand. So he helps interpret the dreams and watch this. Now... The Pharaoh has a dream that needs to be interpreted. Joseph is in this prison. Like, how did I get here? And when Pharaoh needed the dream, Pharaoh calls for Joseph. Joseph comes out, and in one day, Joseph becomes now the prince of Egypt. Now, this is all connected to the scripture. Because in Genesis chapter 15, God told Abram, this land that I'm going to bring your descendants, Abram, that land is called Egypt, y'all, just so y'all know. So guess what? God needed somebody to get to Egypt. Joseph was the chosen one. <laughs> but look what he had to go through to get to Egypt. So him going to Egypt wasn't even for Joseph. It was fulfilling a prophecy to Ab from Abraham in Genesis 15. This may be too much. <laughs> so everything that's happening to you ain't even for you. You're crying and God is like, just hush. This do have nothing to do with you. I just need you to get to Egypt.
You, t- you calling it detours. God is saying schedule. Perfect schedule. So the pit, the palace, all of that, because there was no other way that Joseph would have went to Egypt if he was left to himself. And God said, this prophecy is too important. I need one person to get into Egypt. Now watch this. So Joseph gets into Egypt. Now turn in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 1. This is going to blow your mind. Look at Exodus chapter 1. This is going to really blow your mind. <laughs> Look at verse 1. Now these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, y'all see it? These are the name of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. Can somebody now tell me how did they get to Egypt? Joseph. And then when Joseph got to Egypt, how did the children of Israel get there? Joseph's brothers came to get some food. Uh-oh. And Joseph took them through all this stuff. You know, he was playing around with them a little bit. But after he revealed himself and they realized that his father no was still alive, he says, go get Papa. <laughs> Tell Papa to come where I'm at, which is called Egypt. The place he told Abram in Genesis 15. But watch Joseph, though. When Joseph was being thrown in the pit, raise your hand if you believe Joseph was like, yes, I'm getting thrown in the pit because I'm part of a prophecy. He could not even see what God saw. So the thing you just went through, you have no idea what God is seeing. (laughs) You keep taking it personal. This is nothing about you. You are in the midst of someone else's prophecy. (laughs) So this guy, so God already knew inside this crazy teenage boy is a pastor. Partying on Shuley Street. I already see the pastor in this guy. I've got to find a route, a GPS route to get him to that spot. So he took me through a bunch of stuff. And I'm like, no, this is not... I'm, I'm supposed to be blessed. I'm thinking we're blessed in the city, but all I'm broken. And put, <laughs> I'm like, oh, something wrong. I'm, but guess what? I was really blessed because I'm part of a prophecy. So when I wasn't have, did not have money, he was teaching me how to trust him. That was still working for my good. He took me, and then he took me to the right church, the right pastor. Then that pastor began to train me, discipline me, help me. And then guess what? All of that was to get me to this expected end. So when the guy walked in the house saying, where the birthday boy at? I was scared, but not God. (laughs) He had a plan. God was up there like, okay. All right. In a couple of minutes, this guy is going to walk through the front door. And then Mr. Salter is going to finally come and talk to me. I didn't see that part. (laughs) But this is what it looks like up there because we can see it in scripture. So when God calls people, he always calls you based on what he see at the end. So he goes to people like Gideon and say, hey, you mighty man of valor. And Gideon like, <laughs> Gideon like, who are you talking to? I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm afraid. I can't do it. He was like, oh, you are, he called him a mighty man of valor. Gideon is like, I, I don't even want to do anything. <laughs> God goes to, he goes to Moses and says, you are a deliverer. And Moses is like, but I, 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 I can't talk. He's like, I don't care about your tongue. You're the guy. I see the end. <laughs> I see the end so much. That he had Aaron already ready to speak for him. Because he's like, your excuses don't mean nothing about the end that I see. Because I know you giving God, well, Lord, if I could just get two more years of education, then I'm going to be ready. God was like, I don't need that degree you got. (laughs) That degree don't do nothing in the kingdom. I just need somebody to say yes, Lord, to the fact that I'm in a prophecy. This thing is so deep. God is so amazing. Let me show you this. In the back of the book, many of us don't read. We just did a teaching. At, we're doing a teaching at our church now. Revelation chapter 21 and 22 talks about the new heaven and new earth. 
That's our future. We are in the middle of two earths. The one we are now, and then the renovated one that's going to come in Revelation 21. And we sitting up here thinking we're going to be here for the rest of our life. God is like, you're in the, midst of, you're in the middle of this thing. So why are you killing yourself over that house that ain't even going to be here when Revelation 21 appear? <laughs> oh, I forgot. I, I, I didn't know I was in the middle of a prophecy. He's already prophesied the end. The problem is we don't know what the end look like. So I'm a producer, right? I've, 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 I've produced uh, many albums and things like that, and I've done some own. And, and uh, what, what the job of producer is, it, when I write a song, it's hard for me to just sit down. I'm not the type to just sit down and just get a pen and just start, hmm, what can I write about? I can't do that. Some people is gifted to do that. That's not me. The way it works for me is I hear the end of the song playing in my ear before I even touch the note. So I already hear all the notes and the, the sounds that are supposed to be in the song before I even press one chord. So I see the end first. Then I go and compose the beginning. I hope this makes sense. <laughs> now watch this. So and there's a, and I do in, in my production thing, a lot of times we would um, play, you know, I'll play music, whatever. So when you're listening to a song I produce in your car, you're listening to the finished product. But there is a process you did not get to be involved in called editing. <laughs> in the editing, I'm taking out mistakes that was made that the end user can't hear. But there were a lot of bad notes along the production that you don't hear at the end. This may be too deep. <laughs> because you looking at the mistakes you made, God is like, don't worry about it. When I mix and master you, you're going to be a good track. People are not going to even see those mistakes because I've edited you so good. <laughs> y'all looking at me. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a track. If I told y'all a lot of the mistakes I made, y'all be like, I ain't listening to that dude. <laughs> but God, is, he is such a good producer. When you, hear, when you see the end, you're like, Wow. But there was so many, we ain't going to put this clip in the track. We go fix it and clean it up to give you an expected end. Yeah. When you watch a movie, it's to the point now, Brother Chuck, that when you watch a movie, they actually on purpose, Sister Lisa, show you the mistakes at the end of the movie. So when the movie go off, they will actually give you a couple of little scenes when the people were like, blah, 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 blah. Just to let you know it wasn't perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what you just watched was not perfect. But let me just show you some of the mistakes to let you know that, listen, I know how to edit very well. This is why he put people like David in the Bible. Saul, Peter. You want to know why he allowed us to read their stories? Because he needs you to see what editing looked like. So he'll put, let their mistakes be read, and then you can see and say, well, if he can still use him, <laughs> that is an amazing producer. So when he spoke to Abraham in Genesis 15, he was pretty much telling Abraham, Abraham, I, 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 because you are a friend of mine, I'm going to reveal things. And there's a scripture that says the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. That means God began to show those people who really love him secrets. He began to reveal things to people who really got their heart. That's in Psalms 25. And I'm telling you, he revealed to Abram what was about to happen. This man has no kids. He has nothing. He's like, you, you show me stuff that I can't understand. Then Isaac is born. Isaac has Jacob. Jacob's name get changed to Israel. Y'all know that place that we fly over today? That's called Israel. Where do y'all think that come from? That's Jacob. 
name changed. So watch this. Jacob has 12 sons. Out of those 12 sons come a young man. God just said, I just need one of these boys to get my people who I've chosen into Egypt because there was a prophecy already made about these people. And Joseph was chosen to go through hell for the people. I wonder if somebody here, you're the chosen one. <laughs> just, just wonder. Everyone else seemed like their, their path was so easy. Yours, family broke apart, uh, business fell, and, and you're like, uh-uh, God can't use me. God is like, you're perfect. You are perfect. Because by the time I finish doing what I'm going to do in you, everybody going to know it was me. Because <laughs> if your path was too perfect, you may say, oh, I'm here because I went to Yale and I'm here because, so God will let your whole path get detoured, and you like, what just happened? I had a situation that happened in 2002. When I tell you that thing knocked the wind out my sail, I told my pastor, I remember when that thing hit me, you know, and I was just now getting in, you know, I was in Bible school and just finishing the Bible school and everything, and, and, and in 2002, I remember one day, um, the, the very first band that I was uh, 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 we were uh, doing a, we recorded our first album in, in 2002. And I remember the day that we were doing our album release. I get a call, First Lady, two hours before we had to minister. That was the most devastating news to me. It, it, it shifted my whole, it actually shook my faith. And I'm going to be honest with you, uh, it was so bad, I remember I was on the stage <laughs> And I remember I was on, my key, on the keyboard and the, 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 the team was back here singing. And I, I, I will never forget the day one of my friends, she came and she, she told me, she said, what happened to you? She said, something happened. She said, you look like you were a ghost up there. Like you were, and I told her, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't make it, I couldn't find the praise in me. I, it, I was, it was two hours ago that this news hit me and, and, and you know, and I could not get it. And I, so in my mind, I'm gonna be honest, after that day was over, I'm like, oh, this is going to happen. This is going to be two hours, and, you know, maybe this person's going to call me back by the end of the night, and everything is going to be well. It's been 20 years, and the thing is still the same. And guess what? The old me, I complained for seven years. I went to everybody. I was going to, I was like, I was going to my pastor. Like, I don't understand. I'm like, what is that? And he looked at me. He said, God is making you. I'm like, I don't want to hear that. This hurt. He can make me another way. <laughs> Not like this. <laughs> that thing hurt me so bad. It, it took me seven years to forgive this person. It took me seven years to finally just sit on the, on the chair and just say, I don't know what this was. And why me? Because there's other people who, is, who does stuff and they just walking free. And I'm falsely accused for something that I... So, make a long story short... After seven years, the Lord spoke to me and said, don't fret. You're, I, I need somebody to, I, I, when I choose people, I always choose people for other people. And I'm like, I don't understand. I always choose people for other people. So what I went through had nothing to do with me. He needed me to get to an Egypt because there was some children of Israel that needed to be in Egypt and I was just the chosen one. And this was the method to get me there. After that revelation, I promise you, as God is my witness, the moment I said, yes, Lord, it hurt. I, got, I went in prayer and I said, Lord, I forgive this person, blah, 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 blah. Immediately the phone rung the next day from a person I ain't speak to in a while, and they said, listen, I just want you to know, the Lord just told me to tell you, you are on his mind. He got you in the situation. This is ordained by God. I needed to hear that because I was having questions. And he said, this is ordained by God. God is doing it. And when I sat back and I got up that day, I said, okay. Well, since I'm in the midst of a prophecy, I better have me some fun. Since I'm the chosen one, says Elisa, I went nuts then. 
that's when I started writing all the books. I started recording all the music. I started writing songs, traveling all over. I got so busy in my purpose. I said, well, since I'm chosen, I might as well make a manager this season. Instead of sitting here and complaining about God, what am I going? I said, wait, 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 wait. I'm the chosen one to go to Egypt to help others. So be it. So I looked at the situation. I said, I'll talk to you when the right time come. But I got people I need to help. And since then, I've traveled all over the world and touched a lot of lives because I was in the middle of a prophecy. And since I was in the middle of it, I might as well go to this expected end that he already had for me. So this joyful guy you see, this joy you see, this, this manufactured joy. This thing is real. This comes from the Holy Spirit because he is in charge. So I don't care what you're going through in your life. I know you maybe be like, oh, I promise you, you are right in the middle. <laughs> if you can see that, I, the next time somebody uh, call you and, and, and say something to you or, or rub you the wrong way, oh, that was part of the prophecy. That was supposed to happen. That was supposed to happen. <laughs> so Hickel poor Joseph. Oh, let me, let me give you this, and then we're going to get ready to wrap up. Genesis 3, I, I, I know we read Gen, uh, um, Exodus uh, chapter, uh, chapter 1. I know we read this, but I just need you to see this because this is the part I wanted to really get to. So Exodus chapter 1, verse 1 says, Now these are the name of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob. Came with Jacob, who is Israel. And it, now I'm, I'm going to just take you to verse 5. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls, for Joseph was already in Egypt. <laughs> I'm going to let this sink for you so you can see. He's taking you first. That's why you were the one that went through the hell you went through. He knew you can handle it. And now you get into Egypt. And watch this. When you get into Egypt and he gives you the promotion, the promotion has nothing to do with you. The promotion gave him the favor to bring his dad and his brothers into the prophecy. <laughs> So God is always blessing you to bless others. My Lord, I feel God's anointing you here. Because somebody here, you have some questions. You thought you detoured. And detours, if you are called by God, I promise your detour is not making him up there scratch his head. He's like, okay. Y'all know the GPS, how they reroute us? There's been many times I drove in the car, the GPS said, get off at exit 23, and I just kept on driving. <laughs> Blasting my music. Didn't exit. Okay, get off at exit 26, and I keep on driving. <laughs> exit 27. It's still talking. I'm at exit 45 now, and it's still talking about, okay, on the next exit, get off. The GPS is like, I ain't giving up on you. I am here to give you an expected end. <laughs> you know the destination you put in me, Mr. Mr. Driver? I'm going to get you there. It may take us three hours, but my job is to keep moving you through paths till you get to this Egypt. And you talking about where well, I'm in the woods driving. Oh, don't worry. He, that, that, that GPS knows how to get you out of those trees to get you back on the road and bring you back this way. And then you get here and you're like, Lord, I'm taking two steps back. But the two steps back is actually taking you to Egypt. So when you were in that relationship and, you know, y'all was dating and, and, you know, you was like, man, you know, me and this person go get married. And then all of a sudden they, they dumped you. I mean, uh, they, they, <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I know that is not. <laughs> that was actually part of the schedule. <laughs> you was like, oh, my God, I love him. God was like. Okay. When you finish crying, we go get you back on the path to Egypt. Yeah. God, <laughs> because the prophecy was made over you already. <laughs> 
I, I got to give y'all this testimony, and I promise we go, we go just worship for a second. But let me just, and the reason why we go worship, the reason why we go worship, see, even that cough was part of a prophecy. I'm just kidding. I'm just Jesus. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> I'm just teasing with you, but, but but watch this. <laughs> Some years ago, 2011. This is how serious this thing is, and I'm I'm not lying when I tell you this story. And I've shared it many times when I've speak, spoken at seminars. But I, I just need to connect this into what God wants us to hear. 2011. I was in me and my friend was in New York City. I was, I remember it was a Thanksgiving, um, Thanksgiving day. I went to sleep, and in that dream, that was 2011, in that dream, I had a, I, I, I remember it was so clear, it was as clear as this room in here, that there was, I was at my wedding, and I saw the woman that I was supposed to marry. It was so clear that when I jumped up, I told my friend, I said, oh my God, and I was like, you know, y'all know how we is when we get a dream, so we think it's going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, I'm about to get married. You know, I, I'm, I'm traveling every weekend and doing all this stuff, and, and I'm like, okay, it's time, Lord. And I told my friend, he was like, well, you know, keep praying and blah, blah, blah. So watch this. That was November 2011. Ever since that day, there were other, you know, different people that I met, different people. That, you know, and, and every person I was talking to, I was like, is, are you the person that I saw? Because I'm trying to, I, that thing was so clear. I'm, I'm like, are you hurt? No, no, I need to, no, no. That, and, and people started saying things like, you, you too picky. You, you think you all that. You think it, and I'm like, no, 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 uh-uh, no, no. And I had, now watch this. And then in 2015, I get a call to go to Dominican to be a guest minister. And I told the person, no, I've never been there. I don't speak Spanish. I don't, I don't, I, I'll go there and be lost. <laughs> be writing signs in English to people. And, and, I'm, and I'm over there. And then one day in prayer, the Holy Spirit says, call and say, you're going to go. So I called her and I said, I'll take your offer. I'll go if whatever y'all need me to do, do. So we go and I leave. I go on March 11th, 2016. The next day, I meet my wife, which is actually today, which will be the 12th, March 12th. We met, and she was my interpreter for the week. But watch this. But, but this is the crazy part. Between 2011 to that trip, there was something called process and a gap. In that five years, I had to still walk in this prophecy this prophecy was so clear that everybody, I mean, people were coming and people were like, man, what about her? What about, and I'm like, I, I, and, and I didn't know how to explain what I knew, but I knew. And I'm like, God, I need you to do something because people will start thinking a little something strange about me if I don't. And I just kept on waiting until the point. So watch this. Now, this is going to really blow your mind. Right after the 2011 dream, on in January of 2012, I had three more, two more. And she was in it. And in both dreams, she looked at me, first lady, and told me her age. And I'm like, why is, you know, I won't share her number. But she was like, oh, by the way, I'm blah, blah, blah. She was sharing age. And I would wake up. And I'm like, okay, this is getting scary. <laughs> Do you know, when I met my wife, she was three years younger than the age. So I'm like, uh-uh, something is off. Something is off. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I know the numbers. This ain't the number. But everything around me was saying, stay with the prophecy. Stay. And I'm like, uh-uh, something is wrong. Now watch this. She needed to get her visa to come here. She tried to get the visa one year before the date that of, the, of, the, of the number in the dream. And they did not let it go through. Her birthday is October, and when October hit, the thing got approved that Monday when she turned the exact date of those numbers in the dream. Because it was part of a prophecy. So those numbers was coming because it was already prophesied. This may be too much. 
And I know some people say, oh, I don't believe in that stuff. Well, because you don't read. God will give numbers, dates, and times, and he'll say, listen, at this appointed time, do blah, 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 at this appointed time. He says, 400 years, they're going to be in slavery. And watch this, and then I'm going to bring them out. So Moses is minding his own business. Moses is just chilling. And God looks at his time clock and says, up, oh, it's 400 years. <laughs> They've been in Egypt for 400 years. It's time. Mo um, Moses, I need you now. Moses is like, God is like, um, the prophecy is ready to be fulfilled. And Moses is like, uh, what do you want me to do? God says, I need you to go and tell Pharaoh, watch this, let my people go. Moses is like, I don't even know these people. <laughs> I don't care about these people. God says, this is not about you. I am about to fulfill a prophecy, and I just need a vessel to do it. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So Moses now says, okay, I don't even know who these people are. He goes there, and all of this was to fulfill what was written in Genesis 15. And you really think there's no prophecy over your life. You wasn't even born and God has some things spoken over you. All these cities and you are in Buffalo? Do you really think that's an accident? <laughs> you mean to tell me, I don't know how your parents got you to this little small city that gets a lot of snow. Why are you here? I, listen, if it was left to you, you would be in Hawaii somewhere. God is like, no, for the prophecy, you got to end up in this city right near the water. Not for you, but for those that you're going to touch. So after today, rejoice, be excited, because everything is working for your good, even the bad, <laughs> even the mistakes on that music track that nobody heard, it still go sound good when people hear that track. <laughs> so there's a song that we, we sing that says, don't give up on God, because he now, why won't he won't give up on you? Now we got knowledge. Why, why won't he give up on you now? Because you're part of a prophecy. So when you understand that, the next time the devil starts telling you, you ain't nothing, you ain't a child of God, just say, oh, this, oh, oh, I'm part of a prophecy. I ain't, I ain't even worried about that. This thing, is so, this thing is so profound. In the book of Daniel, Daniel was so close to the Lord that God says, you know, Daniel, I need to show you something. He reveals to Daniel the tribulation period. He shows Daniel even about the Antichrist. Daniel was like, what am I looking at? And we ain't even see it yet. So guess what? We are in the middle of a prophecy. And we sitting there talking about, oh, read Daniel. If you want to know what it's about to look like, read the book of Daniel. It's right there. And we don't know. So we wake up every day just going, oh, let me go to church on Sunday. And we have no idea that the stage is being set for that evil one to arrive. This cashless society, everything we see, it's all being set. And the people who don't know their Bibles is just sitting there saying, what is happening? Why is this happening? Why are they doing this? It's because the prophecy is about to be fulfilled. Christ is about to come. <laughs> and those who have this hope will purify themselves. Because they understand, wait a minute, prophecy is about the end. So I just need everybody who is really serious about just going to the Lord and just saying, you know, Lord, I'm tired of complaining. You ain't called me by accident. Everything I'm going through is to fulfill a prophecy. I want you to stand up and just lift up your hands and let's just, let's just worship our God for a second. Because you are a part of a prophecy. So no more complaining. I know you didn't like the, the way the situations happened, but guess what? When you see all the people you're about to bring into Egypt, <laughs> you're going to be like, it had to. 
So can we just worship God just for a second and say, Lord, thank you for choosing me. You are the chosen one. You were chosen for this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Where are all the Josephs at? <laughs> hallelujah. Come on. Let's just worship him for a second. Oh, Lord, we worship you, Lord. We worship you. Lord, I thank you, Lord God. While we are in the middle of, of this prophecy, Lord God, we worship you because it is coming to pass. I may not understand it, Lord, but we worship you. Even though I may be in prison, I'm going to worship you. Even though I may be in a pit right now, I'm going to worship you. Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Even though I may feel like I'm a slave, I'm going to worship you. Because somehow, some way, you go going to get me to the palace. Somehow, some way, you're going to get me into Egypt. Somehow, some way, you, are, you have called me to be a blessing to many. So, Lord, I thank you. We worship you. We magnify your name on today, Lord God. Hallelujah. Come on, worshipers. Let's just, let's just bless them. Come on, let's just bless them. Let's just bless them. Let's just bless them. Let's 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 bless them. Don't praise them based on what you're going through. Praise them based on the outcome of what you're going through. Hallelujah, Jesus. He's working it out for you. He's working it out for you. The moment you understand this, you are going to be a worshiper at all times. You're going to be a praiser at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth because I'm in the midst of this prophecy over my life. So Lord, I thank you right now, God, for what you're doing today. Come on, let's just spend a few moments. I just sense that God just want us to give him our heart. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. We thank you right now, God. It will come to pass. God has not forgotten you. He is walking with you. Even with all the mistakes, you are still on God's mind. I want you to just go and I want you to just encourage three people and say, you are still on God's mind. Go and encourage three people. Just go to three people and say, you are still on God's mind. Come on, let them know God ain't forgotten them. God has not forgotten them. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are still. You are still on God's mind. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, go to somebody else. Let them know you are still on God's mind. Somebody need to know that you are part of a prophecy. God has not given up on you. Come on, let somebody else know you are part of a prophecy. God has not given up on you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. He ain't give up on you yet. Wow, I see tears. I see people who starting to understand that God didn't throw you away. He's still looking for you. He want you. He wants you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, we bless you. 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 Don't give up on God because he have not given up on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
as our amazing first lady uh, get ready to come up, I, I just want us for a second to just, we go, we go praise God for one thing. I, I just want us to praise God because all of us here, we had some crazy edits in our past. There were some things you did in your past that you don't want nobody to know. And when we look at you today, we like, wow, look at that brother. Look at that sister. I just want us to take a moment to praise God for taking all that crap, all that stuff that you did, that you went through, all those mistakes, and he threw it in the sea of forgetfulness. <laughs> Come on, let's praise him for that. He loves you so much. He says, I, he says, I still want you with all of that garbage. I still want you with all of those addictions. I still want you with all those doubts. I still want you with that abuse. I still want you. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.